Uh, Minister, as has been stated many times in this chamber at this stage, the numbers involved in these revised estimates are huge and denote the scale of the challenge we face in the coming months and years. Coupled to this, of course, is the considerable level of uncertainty around the future of our economy, our education system, our health system and our communities as the pandemic continues to play a major part in our decision making. This will likely continue in the months ahead and until a vaccine for the COVID-19 virus is made fully available. It's only right that the focus of this government when agreeing spending and support should be on providing a safety net to those grappling with difficulties during these times. It is in this context um, and the context of the challenge and uncertainty that we should seek to bring a rigour to our methodology in public spending. This is where developing our processes around a just transition and the use of our future, future budgets and particularly available stimulus funds will be so important and keenly felt. In March 2020, the National Economic and Social Council issued a report that considered the most effective and people-centred way to implement a just transition. It recognised that around the world, governments are trying to identify with the greatest possible certainty which sectors of their economies are most at risk of disruption from transitions in the coming decades. The current pandemic is a microcosm of this work. The report notes that complex transitions are not occurring in isolation from other global trends and potential transformations such as urbanisation, population growth and globalisation, as well as the move towards a circular economy and increased protection of biodiversity, habitat and ecosystems. Societies and economies are becoming increasingly service orientated and urbanised. For Ireland, this will present a significant challenge. In the programme for government, we committed to a just transition. And as we end fossil fuel dependence and as digital disruption and automation become more prevalent, we need to make sure that nobody is left behind. And that means creating economic opportunity through climate justice policy making. So in consideration of the broad scope of these estimates and um, some of the new subheadings that have been created, and with respect to the newly announced EU stimulus package, I was disappointed to see that the Just Transition Fund will be 17.5 billion, less than half of what was pre pre previously proposed. This was one of the supports we would have relied on to move towards a fairer and more environmentally responsible economy. The changes to the fund do not match the scale of the challenge the EU face, faces, or indeed the challenge Ireland faces, both in terms of the economic impact of COVID-19, nor of the unfolding climate emergency. In gutting the Just Transition Fund, a small number of countries have decided that electoral politics back home matter more than EU solidarity. Poorer countries will pay the price for populist politics in wealthier nations. Though itself one of the wealthier nations, for Ireland this is particularly relevant as I think there's a lot of uncertainty around upcoming issues such as cap reforms for farmers. On one hand we're asking farmers to play a big role in reducing carbon emissions, in improving biodiversity and ensuring food security. But many of these farms are not big enterprises so it's not clear how they will do this with much less support. So with these gaps in funding for Just Transition and farmers, my question is around how these activities will now be funded because the need for fu such funding has not gone away. More than ever, it is important that we use the funding we are getting from the EU, including the Brexit funding where appropriate and our own borrowing to invest in public services and projects that will support these aims. As we vote through these estimates and continue the discussions around further supports, it is imperative that we get this right and instill a just transition to any and all legislative work. Could the Minister outline how, as department estimates continue to increase, we can stitch in just transition decision making into our legislative work? Um, thanks, very much, um, <coughs> thanks very much, thanks very much, and thanks, um, Deputy Horrigan. I suppose uh, rather than actually the specifics of numbers, uh, which um, you know ordinarily uh, I, I would be asked to respond to, I suppose it's more of a, a policy um, discussion that uh, Deputy Horrigan and a policy uh, question that Deputy Horrigan asks, particularly in the context of what's happening at the moment. Uh, and I don't disagree with what she's saying because we have, we've seen in the recent number of years, as we've seen. Um, I suppose different versions of displacement in terms of um, our economy and what the future of our jobs are going to look like. We've seen a climate change um, displacement in terms of, I think, moving over the last number of years as a government, as society, as community, uh, to realising <coughs> things are going to have to be done differently. We have seen displacement in terms of Brexit, uh, where I think as a country we, we really were jolted into looking to see uh, how we were going to manage uh, our connectivity, our place within the centre of the European Union. Just in very basic terms, in terms of uh, infrastructure, for instance, not even 
considering or not even taking into consideration um, the wider issue as to how we were going to connect ourselves to the remainder of the European Union while working with the United Kingdom, which was going to become a third country. Uh, and then as well in relation to digital displacement, uh, Minister Humphreys, as part of the last government in relation to the National Development Plan, launched a specific fund uh, in that area to assist businesses, assist communities, assist individuals where there was going to be displacement. And we know over the last number of years that certain types of jobs have disappeared and they will never come back. We know, for instance, in relation to the just transition that needs to happen in the Midlands. We know that there are other communities that are going to have uh, uh, to face challenges. We know that our agricultural sector, for instance, faces challenges. That's spelt out in the programme for government. But we also know that the farming organisations in particular, um, in conjunction with farmers, have really, I think, taken to the concept of being accepting of change. Uh, and over the last number of years, through various different initiatives that the Department of Agriculture, Chagask and others would have initiated, Farmers have changed, and Deputy Horrigan is right. We are trying to provide food, a food island, uh, not only for ourselves, but for the wider European Union and beyond, and to do that in the most responsible way. And we are transitioning in that, and we have to bring people with us. So, roundabout, short version, yes, the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform have a role in this. The biggest role will be in relation to um, the bilateral meetings that are going to start happening between now and the end of September with individual ministers and ministers of state and the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform, where there will have to be regard to those elements that are spelt out in the programme for government. And I think the government has already shown itself that it is adept at doing that and it is up to doing that. Um, but it will be a process. It will be a process of change. And whether it's COVID, which has been another major shock to us in terms of displacement, in terms of just transitioning, in terms of um, our farming practices, in terms of digital displacement, in terms of even changing our work practices in terms of gender equality. And I know Deputy Nolan raised that a while ago, and I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to come back to you, uh, but I hope to come back to you in writing. As a department, we have a central role in leading that because every penny that comes through the coffers of the state must come through us. We're almost like a clearing house. But as well as that, the policies that are adopted by every department have to come through us. So we're not just accountants. We're not just financial people that have a regard to pounds, shillings and pence. We also have regard to the programme for government and the legislative programme that we've laid out as a government. And deeper, the Department of Public Expenditure and Reform oversee that. And we'll work with the like of Deputy Horrigan, Deputy Nolan and every other deputy in here who has raised very important issues to make sure that those matters are addressed over the next number of years.